Anytime there's a major disaster, it's important to have reliable communications, and Hurricane Helene showed how well amateur radio works when everything else fails. The Baofeng UV5 radio is one of the most popular handheld transceivers out there because it's inexpensive. The radio operates on both VHF and UHF in the 144 and 440 MHz bands and can transmit simplex or on a repeater. If you just got one of these radios, I'm going to show you a very simple quick start overview of how to get on the air quickly on simplex. Since this is geared towards hams, I'll be setting it up on 146.52 simplex, the national simplex calling frequency on 2 meters, but you'll be able to enter in any other frequency on 2 meters or 440 using the keypad on the front of the radio. In an emergency, having one of these inexpensive radios may save your life, in the outback or in a disaster like Hurricane Helene, because search and rescue teams often use compatible equipment that can talk to these radios. So let's get started. And here's just a reminder. An FCC amateur radio license is required to legally transmit on ham radio bands. This Baofeng UV5R radio setup shows basic instruction on how to get on the air quickly on 146.52 MHz simplex, the national 2 meter calling frequency. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Baofeng UV5R radio for simplex operation, and we're going to cover the following items. How to put the radio into frequency mode so you can directly enter frequencies on the radio keypad. We're going to set it up for 146.52 simplex. How to set up the steps setting for the 5 kHz channel spacing. How to put the radio into simplex mode configuration to talk radio to radio direct. I'll show you how to put the radio receiver in carrier squelch mode by turning the receive CTCSS setting off. And finally, I'll show you how to change the power level setting to either high or low power, depending if you want to save your battery or use high power for extended range. First thing we're going to do is turn the radio on. Frequency mode. If it's in frequency mode, we're ready to move on to the next step. If it's not in frequency mode and it's in channel mode, Mode. Then we need to change it from channel mode to frequency mode. We do that by pressing the orange button on the front of the radio that says VFO slash MR. VFO stands for Variable Frequency Oscillator and MR stands for Memory Recall. We want to be in VFO mode, frequency mode. So press that button if it says channel mode and switch it back over to frequency mode. Another way you can check to see if you're in frequency mode is if you look at the display screen and you'll see your radio frequency displayed, look over to the right and see if there's a little number over there. If there's a number, that indicates in memory recall or channel mode, and that is the channel number that you're currently listening to. Because you want to be in frequency mode, you don't want to see a number there. So you want to make it go away by pressing the VFO MR button and it'll toggle back into frequency mode or VFO because we need to be in frequency mode. The next step of the radio before we enter the frequency is to make sure that the channel spacing is set correctly. Channel spacing is a little bit beyond the scope of this video, but basically it affects whether or not you can enter a frequency properly into the radio. To make sure it's set up properly, hit the menu button on the keypad and we want to go to the menu item that says steps. And that's menu item number one. So when you press menu, just scroll up or down until you see steps. And there's a little number way over on the right hand side that will also indicate menu item number one. Once you've gotten there, what you want to do is press the menu button again so that the cursor is down on the lower line and use the up down arrows and scroll to where it says 5.0K. That's five kilohertz. You have several to choose from, different numbers there, but one of them will be 5.0. That's the one you want. Then press menu. You'll hear the confirmation voice say the word confirm. Confirm. And then at that point, you can hit the exit button. It's really important to follow it in those exact steps. Otherwise, it won't store it properly and you'll have to do it again. So now we've got our radio set for five kilohertz channel spacing and we're ready to enter the frequency that we want to operate on. If you look at the display, you'll also notice that there is a cursor next to the number on the top line. That's indicating that that is the band, because it's a dual band radio, that we're operating on. You can toggle between the bands by pressing the blue button that says AB on it. We're on A, which is the top, and B is the bottom, so we want to be on the top, so it should be all ready to go. At this point, we can now enter our frequency. 
So we're going to pick a frequency, which is the national simplex calling frequency for ham radio on two meters, which is 146.520 megahertz. So we enter. We enter 146.520. If you make a mistake while entering the frequency, just use the exit key like a delete key and enter the correct digit. If you've already entered a complete frequency, just enter the new frequency and it will overwrite it. You do want to make sure you enter the full frequency and don't stop short. So you want to enter 146.520. Don't forget the zero. Otherwise it won't enter correctly. Now that we've entered the frequency, we want to make sure that we're in simplex mode. And we do that by going back into the menu Pressing menu, 25, item number 25. And again, look for the little number on the right-hand side of the screen. What you're looking for on the display is SFT hyphen D. Frequency shift is what it basically is. And it's item number 25. What that's used for is when you're going through a repeater, you have a transmit offset frequency that you transmit on. But since we're simplex, we don't want that. So we're going to be transmitting and receiving on the same frequency. So therefore there is no shift. So it's going to be off. If that setting is not in the off position, you do the same thing. You drill in via the menu. So you press the menu button so that the cursor is on the lower line adjacent to where off will be if it's not. And then use the up down arrows to scroll through the three different items that are in that menu option plus, minus, and off. You want to select off, and when off is displaying, then hit the menu button. You'll get the confirmation from the voice if the voice is turned on. Confirm. At that point, you can hit the exit button to completely exit the menu. It's really important to hit menu before you exit. Get that confirm notification, and then hit exit. If you skip that step and go directly to exit, the setting that you just entered into the radio will not be stored, and you have to go and do it again. We're almost done, but we need to check one more thing. We need to turn off the receiver's CTCSS tone. What that setting does is it puts the receiver in carrier squelch, where it hears anything and everything that's on that frequency, or in tone squelch, where the radio won't hear anything except transmissions with a specific tone. On this radio, it's called CTCSS. It stands for Continuous Tone Coded Squelch System, and it's item number 11. We want to turn it off so that you can hear everything and anything that's on the frequency. So again, we press the menu button. Menu. We go to item 11, either by a direct entry, pressing 1-1, or by scrolling with the arrows. And when we get to item 11, we see R-CTCS. And what we're looking for is the word off on the bottom line, because we want it off. If it's off, you don't have to do anything more and you're good to go. If there is a number there, we're going to change it to off by going into the menu. CTCSS. Scrolling with the up-down arrows, get to the off display, and then hit menu again. Confirm. Get the confirmation, and then exit. So now the radio is ready to go. We're listening and transmitting simplex on 146.52. We've got the carrier squelch, the tone squelch set to off, so we're going to hear any traffic that's on that frequency. And the only thing left to check perhaps would be the transmit power. So we can go back into the menu and check that setting pretty quickly. We go menu, menu, and then we scroll into item number two. The display will show TXP for transmit power. And if you look at the bottom line, it will say either low or high, indicating low power or high power currently is the setting. Low power to save battery consumption or high power to try and get more range and distance with the radio. If you want to change it, you can go into the menu and change it. Press menu. Power. Use the up-down arrow to choose low or high. Then hit menu again, get the confirmation. Confirm. Then exit. So now we've got the radio ready to go on 146.52 simplex. It's in frequency mode, VFO mode, where we can change frequencies easily on the front keypad. We've got the channel step set for 5 kilohertz, which is going to cover all of the frequency settings that are common on 2 meters. We've got it set for simplex, not repeater offset. And we've got the receiver set for carrier squelch, so we'll hear all the traffic that's on that frequency. And finally, we took a look at the transmit power, if we needed it to be low or high, depending on if we wanted to save the battery power on low power or use the high transmit power for trying to get more range out of it. 
Well, this was a very basic quick start tutorial to get you on the air quickly. If you want to better understand the difference between simplex versus repeater mode, I have another video where I explain it further. Look in the description box below to find the link. If this video was helpful, please give it a like so that others can find it too. I'll have some other videos that go deeper into the radio, so be sure to hit the subscribe button to get notified. If you're interested in getting a ham radio license, check the description section also for details on how to do it. It's not hard, and it can be priceless in a disaster. So until next time, 73.